Right, how are we doing everybody? Welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Today, joined by George. George, if you're new to the channel, he's a aspiring professional golfer who comes down, practices here at the range and occasionally I'll drag you in and get you to do the demonstrations for the video. We're gonna be talking about a really important area today and it's something that I've been asked about recently quite a bit and it's become a very topical discussion um, for many golfers, but particularly for a lot of the online lessons that I've been doing as well. We're talking transition. Okay, so the difficulty is, let's say the transition as a, as a point of reference is let's just say that sort of hitting area when we're thinking of hitting the ball. Yeah. Okay, so what needs to happen? A few things. One, we need to rotate. Okay, so if you pause at the top of the backswing position, lovely. Now I'm just going to come and stand to the side of you for a moment. So I'm going to hold this above your lead ankle, right? Yeah. So as you transition, you need to re-establish the place of the lead shoulder exactly, okay? So if you show us a transition where you go two up, yeah, then the shoulder doesn't go back, okay? So if the shoulder, if the lead shoulder doesn't re-establish its place from the address position, then contact is going to become compromised. It's as simple as that, yeah? The way that you get it back to where you demonstrated what George did brilliantly is that he made sure that he takes his posture, he rotates the pelvis back, and in transition he keeps the pelvis very much downward facing. So as he keeps the pelvis downward facing, and should we say moving towards your lead ankle? Yeah. Yeah, keep, keep going a little bit more. That's it. <clears throat> as he moves it back towards his lead ankle, this re-establishes weight on the left-hand side. It triggers rotation, and he's getting himself into a position where he would extend and hit the ball. Okay, so you would never, don't forget like these videos, you would never, you don't think, you have to be aware of this stuff. You have to articulate it to understand it, but then you need to do drills to build awareness. Like you can't stand over the ball thinking about these things, right? But what it is, is that if you're struggling in transition, which means you go too much this way, or you're spinning out, that's the whole point of this discussion, right? So we're talking about all the possibilities as to how you guys might be getting this wrong and then what we also produce on the channel is drills. Yeah. So it helps you feel the difference between right and wrong. Yeah, okay? You can't make a change if you don't know what 100%. Good. And if you're struggling and you know, you've been struggling on it for a while and you know, we've got some fresh ideas and stuff and it might be here, it might be another channel, it might be all, it's fine as long as you understand the context as to what you're doing, right? So what you've got to do in the transition is you've got to re-establish the position of the lead shoulder. The way you do that is you have to keep the pelvis downward facing because as the pelvis moves, that creates separation, which is important for sequence because it stops you swinging over the top. And then as you keep doing that, and the pelvis points down towards the lead ankle. Once the weight firmly establishes itself back in the left, you'll then trigger an extension. You need the extension to get the delivery, so on and so forth, right? Okay, so let's hypothetically suggest that if we swing back, nice, but if we kind of swing back and get a little bit spinny, yeah? yeah. So this would mean, yeah. That was spinny. Right, so <laughs> that was really spinny. So if you swing up and pause for us. Right, and then slowly spin. Okay, good. So what spinning means that George is demonstrating here is that as soon as he starts that downswing, which means that as soon as he starts to think about that left hip or the pelvis going back in towards the left ankle, whatever it might be, or the chest going down, whatever the feeling is, the right hip is coming forward. So the question would be, why is the right hip coming forward? And the answer would be the backswing. Yeah. If he's not, if you're not rotating enough to get the hip back, if you're not putting enough pressure through rotation underneath that trail leg, you can't do anything about it. As soon as you pull that left hip back, that right hip's gonna fire forward. So if that's you and you're swinging over the top maybe, or you're a better golfer and you kind of feel like you're getting trapped, you have gotta link it back to the backswing. And generally, 99% of the time, people who suffer in transition suffer in the backswing. Yeah. I don't think I've ever met anybody who nails the backswing and suffers in transition. Yeah, it because kind of just falls into place. I think so. I, th I think so. I think the more that you can load in that backswing position and the more you can really, you know, turn the pelvis into the leg and activate things like the glute, <clears throat> I think that you'll generally have more of a reactional state to that in the transition. Do you know what I mean? So, 
if we kind of have to talk about the backswing now. So we've done some videos upon this. In the backswing position, yeah, we are really trying to make sure we turn the pelvis into the leg. And as a reference to make sure you do this right or wrong, if you just um, get yourself set up again, as a reference between right and wrong, if I kind of um, stay my distance, place this here, yeah, you can see the way the hip would be pushing. Sorry, George, do that again because I move slightly. So if I hold this against his left hip, see the way the hip works deeper. So if your hip joint is moving back, then that would generally be a really good indication that you're turning in towards it. Yeah. But I would just be careful that you don't want to go back and then still do forward. Which would be turning over the leg yeah. as opposed to turning into the leg. Yeah, because you might try and get it back. Yeah. But then in doing get it back, you're still in the hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. So you, that's where we do things like the chair drill and other drills that I've been documenting and talking about on the channel, yeah? yeah? If you swing up, just pause for us. I mean, what I would say, like George keeps an element of flex in the trail leg. I think it's okay for your right leg to straighten in the golf swing if you increase the hip rotation. So if you turn more uh, pelvis, so just rot trigger more rotation, then the, exactly, then the trail leg would straighten. Makes sense. So I wouldn't, I don't believe personally in like straightening the leg. I think the leg should straighten due to the rotation. I think it's important that you do it that way round. Otherwise I think you'll fabricate motion. So that would exist. Let's talk a little bit about pressure. Although that's very difficult to find that relatable. A lot of people. I mean, personally, when I swing back, if I'm aware, my foot feels like it wants to do that. And I would genuinely suggest that you've got to remember your body is moving this way. The only thing that's not, do you know what I mean, is going to be this. So everything's turning in towards this leg and this has to act like the barrier of resistance again. So I think you should feel it down a bit like the quad. Yeah, I mean, well, you show me, you swing up and you tell us how it feels to you. So that's a really good backswing. Yeah, I mean, I can kind of feel it down the side of the leg yeah. there, and obviously in the hip as well. Yeah. And then like, I mean, the foot definitely kind of twisting yeah so i think an, an interesting topic as well is would be the the position of the weight so what we tend to see when they look at pros data of force plate is that we tend to see differences and we tend to see some pros that keep it more towards the toe yeah. some pros keep it more towards the heel some pros keep it more on the outside part of the foot because it kind of supinates and moves this way but i think that's what i'm saying like if your if your leg is trying to grip into the ground to counteract against the rotation that's why I don't think it would be that uncommon that the weight would end up quite equally distributed. Yeah. You know, I'd be careful if you're on the toe, personally, because I think you would you should maybe rotate more to counteract that. But, but this, is, in my opinion, this is how we, this is how I've seen people progress, and these are some of the key things that you have to look for to transition. Yeah. Yeah. So, so well, in order to improve the transition, it's like you don't want to work on the transition. You want to make sure everything in place so the yeah. transition. Can yeah, hundred percent. So, you know, this is where, if you hit that one, yeah, this is where you want to really work on hip back, and then you can start to work on that sort of rotation in the movement. Yeah, yeah. good couple of drills that we can do. Um, first one, you can do second one i'll have attempted doing do you want to do i just want you to concentrate um on the step drill but i don't want you to you don't need to fall okay. so you can just smother it step okay. okay so this would be a really yeah that's so this is so for the, some of you that don't compress the ball well this is a really good drill so basically as soon as george steps his lead leg's going to be yeah towards the target and he's just thinking about his upper body smothering over the ball yeah, yeah. now if you do that drill you might notice that you might struggle for consistency and contact first but generally what you'll notice is because you're getting your chest massively over the ball <laughs> and again. so if you do that drill what you'll notice is that your contact will massively improve because you'll get the chest over the ball and you'll get that sort of compress on the back of the ball what you might start to notice is it becomes a bit too steep yeah so this is when i would step in and what you would need to work on is the sequence. And golfers that I teach that, sh that fix the backswing, right? But then they're struggling to blend it all together. 
and let's be honest the transition isn't necessarily the area that you want to become overly thought provoked by then what you basically work on is a drill where you get set up to the ball similar to what George demonstrated left foot by right club opposite feet take it back to halfway but this time as you're stepping back forward in a linear fashion you want to keep rotating back and then as soon as you get to that top then you want to move and the difference between the two drills is George's drill gets the upper body over the ball so it's a very powerful good feeling to have but the problem is this can fire forward so if you then step it keeps the hip back to then fire forward do you know what I mean so it's a very subtlety but it's a really really important thing and this is genuinely my first swing in a few days so take it back pause just to make sure you don't start turning too soon and then step and then basically you'll start to feel the difference between that leg staying outward as you step and then massively pivoting and rotating as you go through so hopefully you enjoy the video and hopefully you find it beneficial and you learn a few things in a, a few bits hopefully there's enough in there for you guys to understand what it is that you're trying to achieve understand what it might be that you're doing potentially wrong and you might need to look back at your backswing position and there's also a couple of drills to help you guys rectify it equally as well really important part of the golf swing in my opinion the pivoting action if you can pivot consistency or pivot with consistency you'll generally i think also lead to much more consistency in your golf swing contact and direction of the ball hopefully enjoy the video always appreciate thumbs up like remember it's absolutely free to press that subscribe button if you're going to do so press the little bell icon catch up with you guys again soon